Welcome everybody, we got a special treat today here in this video. We are doing a combined Splinterland YouTuber video. I've never done this before and we got Dwayne here, which I don't think you've ever done this before either, have you? I have not and I'm excited to be here. I love I love your channel, Pal, and I'm, I'm really pumped to be talking with you today. Yeah, I'm excited as well and I think we're both going to post these videos to our own channels and maybe do slightly different edits, but they'll probably be roughly the same content and I hope you guys enjoy this and if you guys do enjoy this, let us know so that we can keep doing this and if this is a total fail and flop, we'll just never do it again, right? <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm super excited. Uh, Dwayne, for those that you don't know, he's got, I think, the second biggest YouTube on Splinterlands. Is that correct? I think Bulldog. Maybe. I know but Bulldog has way more and I don't know, does Clove have more? I, I'm not sure really, honestly. Okay. Well, I'm just going to, I'm going to give you the silver medal. I don't know. I, someone go track it. the stats, but I'm, I'm going to give you the silver medal. And it's cool for me to be able to do this video with you because uh, as I was saying a little bit earlier to you that I, I got into Splinterlands just a couple months ago and I watched Bulldog, of course, because he's the biggest. And then the second channel I found was your channel. So you and Bulldog helped me to get where I was even before I was making content. You guys are what hooked me into the game a little bit here and there. And Help me to start building up some cards and assets and you know your famous infamous line time and attention you know of course that stuck in my head when did you start saying that by the way do you know uh, that's been something that um that's like that kind of goes back to like why i play this game in the first place and i like three years ago i was uh into blockchain i was like i guess four years ago i was like before the last bull run whatever that wherever that was mm -hmm. i was getting into Bitcoin at around 3000 US dollars. And that's wow. before it ran up to 20. And that's when um, it went, I bought it in at three and I like, I took all my life savings and I put it in crypto. Um, and it wasn't a lot, like, don't get me wrong. I'm not some millionaire now, but it was, uh, you know, I took all the savings I had accumulated. All right. And you and I were speaking before the, the video started, like you, I, I had some humble beginnings. And so my, my starting point was pretty humble too, but I took that initial egg and I put it into Bitcoin and then quickly some altcoins, including Steam. And Steam was, um, I don't know if anybody even really knows what Steam is, but it's oh. a blockchain that is one of the fastest transactions per second. And originally it offered um, some blogging websites that were really cool, like Steemit and yeah. PeakD and stuff ran on there. And, um, and, and so I was doing that. It's like a st you got staking rewards essentially by posting content, just like you do on um, Splinter Talk today, mm -hmm. where you go and post a, a blog or a vlog about your favorite interest, which might be Splinterlands. You go in there and you, you share it, and people can upvote you. And the system will understand those upvotes as, as indication that that is valuable. Right. And so I, in that moment, it's like a light went on where it's like, oh, like, the time I am offering is worth something. And then at the same time, you know what I mean? Cause you're writing a blog yeah. and then somebody gives an upvote and it's, it's generating money out of thin air by the, through the blockchain um, as a reward for your time and attention to that, to that blog site. And then I, then I started thinking about how that works elsewhere, like Facebook and, and, and um, Google and Instagram, they all monetize you. And so oh. it's like, Oh, like my time on this site is worth something. They know that. And that's why they mm. sell me and they sell our content to yeah. advertisers. And that led into, I discovered Brave Browser and, and, and somewhere along the lines, uh, Steam Monsters. And, and that was kind of toward the end of the, of the bull cycle. But I, I saw my, my fortune deleted by 95% losses as that market came crashing Oof. down. But then I also saw this interesting opportunity in this video game that would reward me every single day, a little bit at a time. Yeah. Um, with these assets that could theoretically really wildly appreciate because at the time there's like a thousand players and I just knew it was fun I enjoyed it and more people would one day come and so That's that's the, how it started That's awesome. Yeah, I love that. That's that's a, such a cool story and to get into crypto You said it must have been like 2017 then right? I or guess yeah, it, was, it was September of whatever right before it right over right before Bitcoin went to 20k K. Yeah that's that's funny because my story getting into crypto is is much does not that have that long of a history. I mean, my dad is the one that got me into it, talking to me about it back in March of this year, and you know he's explaining this to me, and I'm like, 
Bitcoin, whatever. That's that's a scam, you know. Like, what are you, what are you doing? Stop being crazy. And as he's explaining this technology and the different projects and things that are going out, that's really what piqued my interest. And for me to get into it, I, I didn't have a ton of, of things to invest with, right? Kind of as you're saying, it's like, well, I got I got some savings, but I don't necessarily want to just dump that all into crypto, personally. And so what I went out and did was just started driving for DoorDash as a secondary job. Cause oh. I was like, well, it's it's essentially free money if I can just, you know, I don't need this. It's on top of my other job, my other expenses, and I'm okay putting it into crypto, even if it goes to zero, cause whatever, you know, it's just the mm. secondary money for me. And of course, kind of as you're saying, I got in literally, what was it, two months before the crash, I think in May, um, where it dropped from 60K to eventually 30K, right? So we saw, mm. You know, mm -hmm. essentially everything just cut in half and yeah it, it's interesting for even just being that my first experience I, I feel like that's a good thing in a way because yeah now moving forward i'm like okay i know this is possible that everything could just instantly yeah. be cut in half again and that can happen at any moment so am i really worried about that if i'm just holding these things long term playing splinterlands do mm -hmm. i really need to be concerned about that uh, because I, I feel like a lot of people, I don't know if you get this experience, a lot of people, it seems like they're so short-sighted in crypto or in this game. I don't know if you get that feeling as yeah. well. Yeah, I think often the the idea gets lodged or like big. there's a kernel there where people just start to feel, almost ruminate on that possibility or that concern. Like what if, what if I'm... I, I don't find the top or what if I buy it too early? That's yeah. another thing too. It's like two sides of the same coin. Um, they don't want to buy, for instance, right now, SPS, people are concerned about SPS being like, is it too high because it's going to be 20 cents tomorrow, you know, mm. or in like in, in a month when the, um, when the pre-sales over and if it goes to 20 cents and I buy it now, I'll feel so foolish and I could have had more. And that and that that could have had more is like the biggest lie that you are going to just be is going to like ruin your whole life. And I mean that yeah. literally because it's like it, it affects how you invest, but then it also affects how you live. And if you it's like you have to just when you you, you make a decision in your life and you, you try to make it as educated as you can and you try to make it like timely as appropriate as possible. Um, and with investing, I think you do a little at a time, dollar cost averaging. Yeah. Um, and that way, you, like you you have to, but there's a hum, there's a humility there that you have to, you have to say, I'm not smart enough to actually pick the bottom. Mm. I'm not smart enough to identify the top. So I'm going to dollar cost in and dollar cost out. And people don't really think of themselves that way often. Like the, some people, people feel like, no, no, I know what's going to happen. It's going to go to 20 cents. So I'll wait till it gets there. Yeah. And and then sometimes you just, maybe you're right. And maybe I'm wrong, but I think that's a way more high risk than just what I do and what I've always done. So that's how I, that's how I think about that. Yeah. I love that. I love that thought about it's humility to have to say, I can't <laughs> think that I, I'm going to hit the bottom buying and hit the top selling yeah. perfectly in it. You know, that's, have, that's such a hard thing. I think especially in crypto because things are always going up and up and up and then all of a sudden crash, you know, up, 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 yeah. up and crash. And yeah. it can just mess with your emotions. I almost, maybe not in this video, but I feel like we need a future video maybe on just like crypto and NFT gaming in general and how it affects your mental health. Because I, I am kind of concerned yeah. about that for a lot of people. And it, it messes yeah. with your emotions that a normal, you know, playing Call of Duty mm -hmm. or League of Legends... It, there's no financial piece to mess with your emotions like that. Yeah, there's no, the stakes are lower, right? Like it's just a mindless, yeah. and I love that too. I play, I don't know, but you you play games outside of this, right? Um, I, most of the time I would say yes, but with uh, Splinterlands and content creation, I feel like yeah, it, it kind of takes up all of my gaming time at this point. Mm. What kind of games did you play before this kind of got a little crazy for you? Yeah, I mean, my... My uh, my previous channel that I used to do was esports with uh, Switch games and specifically Splatoon 2. So I don't know if you even know that game. It's a little obscure if you don't play the Switch, but Is it essentially like a third person shooter. It's yeah, a third person shooter with paint, and you can like swim around yeah, yeah, yeah. in the paint. It's it's really unique. It, it looks a little kiddish at first if you're not used to it, but it's actually a really unique shooter. And before that, <laughs> I would say my biggest game was League of Legends. Put a lot of time with my friends 
playing cool. playing that MOBA. So I don't know about you. What what are some games other than Splinter Lands you play? Before this, I played a lot of Apex Legends. I was, but nice. you know, I played a lot, like every, a couple hours a day, and I'm trying to get better and better. And I just, I don't, I lack. Like I'm, I'm getting older now. I'm 40 now, and I, I don't have the like Twitch uh, that yeah. like the, that like my little brother has. Yeah. And oh, uh, I feel that so, way at 27. <laughs> so, are you telling me it's only getting worse for me from here? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It is. No, it's it's good. It's good. Things are good. They're, they're just good in different ways. That's that's yeah, the, that's sure. what you're looking forward to. Got it. <laughs> Did yeah, you ever but, play um, Valorant? That was the other no, one I played I, for a bit. I, I played the game. I play a lot of games and I played games ever since when I was little. And I like Nintendo was my first thing. Normal Nintendo. Mm -hmm. And um, and this year, actually, I'm going to get my my kiddo, my older. I don't know if I should say this too loud. going to get her a Nintendo Switch. So. Ooh. We'll, we'll be experiencing that that Mario feel again for the first, like which will be like my kitty kid in a candy store moment also. So oh yeah. So I grew up doing all that and then Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis and 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 I've played all my life all kinds of games. But in the last ten years, it's really been Apex and um, and Overwatch and now more recently Diablo two and and a, a Splinterlands for every day for years now too. So mm. that's awesome. Yeah. So okay, yeah. I, I have a quiz question for you. Sure. Let's see, let's see if you can guess it. I'm I'm 28, right? Okay, born in '93, right? Okay. Guess my first console that I played. Mm, PlayStation One. Sega Genesis. What? Yep. Wow. What game? <laughs> uh, a, a few games. My dad actually started getting me into gaming probably when I was two. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh wow! Uh, played different, you know, fight. Uh, I think it's Battle Toads, Toe Jam, and Earl. We got awesome. uh, like even the Simpsons video game, just yeah. weird things like that. Toe Jam and Earl was a great as a classic. It's like oh, a kind I of love a cult it. classic. I love it. Yeah, and I then, actually, I, I have Toe Jam and Earl on my Nintendo DS. Like it's a it's a ROM ported over, uh -huh. so I can enjoy it on my DS. Yeah, I tried to get my wife to play that game, and she thought I was crazy. It, it, yeah. She's like. How much uh, how much drugs were they on when they made this game? <laughs> I can hear the sound effects like right now. If it, if people are watching and they never heard Toe Jam and Earl, you guys should check out the port. It's a Sega Genesis game. It's it's like so two good. aliens and they run around on randomly generated. I think they're maybe they're procedurally generated. Maybe no. It they depends must be which mode you pick. Maps. Yeah. And then you like go find presents and open the presents and they have like strange cake in them and they, sometimes the cake is poisonous and <laughs> it's super random. It's super, but it's funny. It's fun. And best funk music you'll find out there. Mm -hmm. so. Oh yeah, the funk music. <laughs> yeah. So I, I'm curious for you. There's this, I think debate in my head as we talk about video games and especially play to earn NFT gamings. And one thing that mm -hmm. I've seen really take over people is more about the money than it is the game itself and for you in splinterlands i'm curious what what appealed to you in splinterlands is it you actually love this gameplay and this is the type of game you would normally play or is it mostly just about investment side for you well that's a good question um that's a really good question because i now i have to kind of unwind my own thinking th like stepping back a few yeah. years and like reimagine my my place there when i because I, like i said I, I came to it through crypto and it was an in, i came to crypto for an investment and then i discovered splinterlands and i took a small bite of it like a few hundred bucks and i bought some what then was a lot of money for i got you know level four of all the beta summoners and like a pretty decent team for all the beta for all wow. all the new splinters it was still only a few hundred bucks. Um, but I guess at that point, the money didn't make, wasn't a big deal because I'd already, I'd already taken all that money out of my investments. I took it out of RSPs. I paid a bunch of tax uh, and I, and I, like I was, I was in crypto now. And so I was using steam to pay for these cards. And I thought, I definitely saw the money opportunity. Like I thought there's only 1,000 to 3,000 people on a daily average basis and this game's fun. And I and and so I think it was probably both, if I'm being totally honest, mm -hmm. even even then, it, you know what I mean? Um, but I definitely, I, I read some comments in my channel and maybe you see this round too. But do you see people say things like, I don't really like the game, but I'm I'm playing it because I want to earn. I, yeah. I don't really get that because I definitely think it's fun. And people also will say, 
it's not it's really easy it's really simplistic I don't I don't think you are playing at a high enough level if, mm -hmm. if that's what you say or maybe you're just much smarter than me uh, if that's how <laughs> you feel but when I play and you guys these guys maybe whoever's watching this they, they watch my channel they see my gameplay they've seen mm -hmm. your gameplay every gameplay every fight is like a, a chess match where um, you have to go into it with like an idea of what would win um, and and then you have to and you can analyze your enemy a little bit and in the future remember we're gonna have um, what are they? We're gonna have like disposable weapons and um, spells or something, right? Yeah, With the land. And coming so there's, out. there's strategy here, man. It's not just luck. And and so I think of it as really fun and entertaining. And there are some matches where I'll where it comes right down to the wire, and I'm like actually on the edge of my seat. Yeah. And I'll actually like emote out loud. I'll say like oh or like whatever. And I'm not <laughs> just exaggerating. Forget the camera. Like I'm I'm into it. Yeah. Totally. I love that. <laughs> that that reminds me of a stream moment. There was a couple yesterday when I was doing the gold testing and I just like walked off camera because I was I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I did that or whatever. <laughs> and you know, I, I agree. I think when you hit I was just testing out that gold life deck and that was my first time in gold and I was like, man, it's almost like a completely different game jumping from you know, when you're first playing in bronze, I can get why people say, Yeah, this game's kind of boring or rudimentary it's like yeah because you're in bronze three right yeah. yeah and then when you jump into silver or even bronze one with all these rule sets you're like oh wow okay there's more strategy i gotta think a little bit harder and then even jumping mm -hmm. to gold for me i was like oh my goodness i have to think about what cards do i rent rent what summoners do i level up what monster level breakpoints and new abilities and does this extra damage really matter for the extra dec i'm gonna rent for this card and Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it really, I think if you're saying this game doesn't have strategy and isn't fun, yeah, you're probably right. They're probably not pushing themselves enough and, and maybe so. sitting at bronze three still. I don't know. Yeah, and and so I don't know. So that makes me think about like the future of NFT gaming because I think some things that I've seen, like I used to play Drug Wars. It was a, um, it was a crypto game. It was run on Steam, I think. Hmm. and um they paid cryptocurrency for it was like one of these like empire capture games i can't give you an, a, a similar named game sure, yeah. uh, but you know you build your army and you can build 20 different minions and, and then you can attack my like city or whatever and if you if you win then you'll claim a certain number of drugs and those drugs are <laughs> a resource that you want sounds yeah, like a great so, uh, family friendly game there <laughs> yeah um but I didn't enjoy that. I felt like that game was just me trying to grind to earn cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. And so I've always enjoyed Splinterlands. And and I it, to me, Splinterlands puts puts like identifies something that is gonna be valuable to all future games, which is that there is you can you can actually put ownership in people's hands of the video game assets, inviting them into that kind of um the experience first of all so yes they mm -hmm. want to play your game but then you know offering that that monetary opportunity for them and i think of games like diablo like i told you i play that game yeah and it's like if the idea if that i could go into a world and find a sword and that sword has been fought with and slayed this demon or that dragon or you know was used by this knight and i can see the history because it's on the blockchain right and then I can monetize that if I just choose in the future to one day, I, okay, I'm, I'm done with this game. Someone else will, it's like, it's literally a thing in the same way that if I want to bring my real world assets to the pawn shop <laughs> and be like, this is a thing, do you want to buy it? Or like, so to me, it just like, it, it fits hand in hand and Splinterlands showed me that. And I don't know, I know there are other games, maybe you could comment on this, but I've never played another really good one. Have you played any other really good ones? Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll back up and share my my thought and story because I got in, I, the first thing I found out about NFT gaming, which I laugh at, I'm like, this is not even a game, was Alien Worlds. So I don't even know if you know about that, but I'm essentially really you literally just log in, you like get NFT tools and you click mine. And then 10 minutes later, you click mine and you're getting, you know, crypto, as, as you said, it was just like, why did I do this? <laughs> but it was, it was more, I guess, the intrigue on this new NFT gaming technology is like, what is this space? I don't understand it. Yeah. And so 
you know, there, there was a part of me that just was willing to play a game just to even understand and to earn crypto. But then eventually mm -hmm. that wore off so quickly and where I was like, okay, this sucks. I'm over it. Yeah. Until I started finding out about different games. And, and Splinterlands is one that I've really grabbed onto because, as you said, I didn't, I didn't think I would enjoy this game as much as I did. I, I got into it because of the crypto aspect and was curious mm -hmm. about it. And as I started to play, I was like, wow, okay. I would have never chosen this game by myself. You know, I would have chosen, you know, League of Legends or, you know, Valorant or whatever. But now that I'm into this game, I actually really enjoy this game. And I think it's fun to play. And I, I think if you're a person out there that's not having fun while playing this game or, or another NFT game that you should quit and, and find one that you do. Now there is some other ones that are coming out that are good. And I think we're going to see continually more games come out that are actually good and you can earn. Right now, I still think Splinterlands is the best. You know, I played a bit of Lost Relics, which was a good game, but the earning aspect wasn't there for me. It was complete RNG, complete random, and it was just one of those like painful things where I'd be like, yeah, I've played this game for 50 hours and made a dollar, and someone could come in and play this game for two hours and find a $200 item, you know? And it's just like, mm -hmm. uh, that sucks. Um, What's so it gonna, yeah. Oh, go on, go on. Oh, I was I was just going to mention the other ones that I'm, I've been playing is Gods Unchained. I haven't played as much lately. Skyweaver, I played the beta. And I thought that was good. And then uh, Blanco's Block Party was is fun for a bit, but I feel like if you don't have a good friend system or community, then it's not as fun of a game. But mm -hmm. that's been my experience mostly so far. What do you think it's going to take for like more of this to come and be successful? Because I... I would say, maybe before I, I'll lead the question a little, I would say that one of the reasons Steam, uh, Steam Monsters, like now Splinterlands, mm -hmm. used to be called Steam Monsters, one of the reasons why it, it is what it is is because there was a pretty big following on the Steam blockchain and the blogging on that on that website wasn't mm -hmm. huge. But I mean, when you compared it to other blockchains, it was it was in the running for like, oh, that's interesting, that Steam blockchain, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, and for what it could do transaction wise. And so I feel like there was just this, there was this audience that was built into that blockchain that then gave some attention to this game Splinterlands. Yeah. Um, and I wonder... I'm not convinced that some of these other ones are gonna are gonna be around. I I don't know. Like what what do you, what's it gonna take for another one to kind of be the next Splinterlands? You think? Yeah, I mean, I have, <laughs> I have a lot of thoughts about this. I think mm -hmm. right now we're seeing so many NFT and play to earn games come out that it, there's not gonna be enough market for them to all survive. I mean, my mm -hmm. my guess is that all these games that are coming out you know, three, four or five years from now, especially if a bear market hits, which probably will within that time period, yeah. maybe 90, 95% of those games are just gone or, or yeah. die off. And that's that's part of the reason why I'm putting in Splinterlands. I, I feel more confident that it will last long-term, that it will survive a bear market versus these mm -hmm. games that, yeah, you might be able to earn 200 bucks a day for a couple of weeks and then it just crashes out of nowhere, right? Mm -hmm. So... For, for it to survive is, is a really interesting thought because you have to, one, pick the right blockchain. The, you know, the yeah. blockchain that it's on is, is an important part of the game. And will the blockchain survive? Or if it doesn't, can you transfer it to a different blockchain? You have gameplay. Is the gameplay actually good and fun and enjoyable? And then can they make a sustainable economy that won't collapse with their crypto or with their NFTs? Mm -hmm. So there's so much to it that's not a part of normal video games that it's hard to say which which game will actually make it because there's so yeah. many factors there. I don't know. I don't know what your thoughts are there about that. Well, I haven't tried. I've been so deep in Splinterlands for as long as I have. And now with the YouTube, like you were saying earlier, I don't feel like I have a lot of margin to carve out for other cryptos and to try other, other crypto games to try and I know I've heard about Axie I um I've heard about I did hear about Alien Wars or the one you mentioned Alien Worlds but I never played it yeah. um and you know like just my past experience there was another one I played too something it was like mana or something and they're just so underwhelming yeah. and I and I've played so many games throughout my life, and I just see how this technology could really just step in and add value to like a, to a real amazing, like a Fallout or uh, or Diablo mm -hmm. or, um, 
you know, any name your RPG, name your favorite RPG, like this, this type of technology yeah. so, or MMO, this would be so cool to just in, implement the, this into that. And you could, you could picture what there, there there's a um, blockchain. I don't recall what it's called, but it's like, you can buy land and the whole thing is, I mean, I guess Splinterlands is doing this too, right? Where they're selling land and it's conceivable that that land could literally be inhabited you could you could build on that blockchain and add layers to it and you it's conceivable that like you could go into that space digitally yeah. and then like develop things in there and then like whether it's build your kingdom or whether it's like build swords to sell to some guy who wants to like it's just i see there's so many cool ways that that could grow and go yeah um but i don't see anybody maybe it's just too early like you know what i mean like even bitcoin people still yeah most people don't really aren't invested in Bitcoin. I don't know, but like when people come to me, yep. it's very rare. And everybody know everybody I love knows I do. I am into crypto. But it's very rare anyone comes to me and is like, "Hey, like you're in crypto, right?" <laughs> and that's like the sell sign. Like when yeah. that happens, okay, like I'm gonna go <laughs> sell some crypto right now. Yeah, and but, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's gonna be interesting to see what happens because there are games that are talking or trying to develop what you're talking about like a mirandis or ember sword or things like that that cool. have more of that mmo style to it but cool. i i think even though there's promises of them coming out next year i feel like before they even really hit the ground running and have it developed a good economy and a way to do this we're probably another three to four years out before i would comfortably say yeah these games know what they're doing because no one's done them before, right? And these things and games take time to develop. So that's why I think mostly what we're seeing success from with Splinterlands and others is card games because that's really the, the easiest type of game to develop and to get good gameplay out there and to develop an economy. And I think for a game to be like, hey, we're gonna be the next World of Warcraft in the blockchain. Well, <laughs> okay, we'll see you in five years, I guess. I mean, that's how yeah. I feel about Star Atlas right now and all their yeah. their big talking promises. I'm like, yeah, it sounds great, but realistically, when are you going to be able to even get something out that's that's anywhere mm -hmm. close to what you're talking about? I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but... Yeah, I agree. And you almost need to come alongside a program like that and to anybody who's kind of like... what they they see maybe what people like myself or others have done with splinterlands over the last three years and they think you know i would like to do that too the first thing is just finding that game that you actually do have some sort of connection with and you enjoy a little enough that you're willing to just play for that hour a day and mm -hmm. and then it might not work out like it might ultimately even splinterlands like i i think we talked before the videos were on like there are things that could go wrong you know the the bronze league stuff the nerfs and people are so worried about whether it's going to gut the like the lower level people and what would that do to the audience and then what would that do to the economy and so on and so forth but i would say you just have to you can't expect any video game to turn you into a millionaire but blockchain ones actually have that chance yeah. so it's like f find one that you're willing to try and you're like a horse you're willing to bet on yep. and then just get involved like put your foot in get get your foot in the door get you you know just get involved start investing that time and attention and then it's like who knows in a year and two and three maybe it ends up being exactly what what i've what i've seen has happened in the last three and i i'm convinced it will be i think yeah i think anyone today doing it today committing today to splinterlands is going to see that but i could be wrong and but i'm i'm betting on that anyways yeah and I, that's one of the things i talked about in my very clickbait video <laughs> um, you know is splinterlands doomed because i don't even think that was clickbait that's literally what people have been saying in my comments so i just like took that as the title and responded to it and you know what what i tried to communicate is even if you don't like splinterlands anymore if you don't believe in it that's fine go find a different game great i'm not going to be upset you do you right but if you're looking at these projects, I think one of the biggest important things is, do you believe in the team? You know, if you mm -hmm. don't believe in the team, that's what's going to make or break a game at this point, because yeah. all these games, they have not really developed more than, I mean, what is Splinterlands and Axie Infinity a couple of years now, three years, right? So mm -hmm. we just haven't seen anyone really pave the way fully of what is a complete 
play to earn nft game look like and how should the economy run and how should the gameplay go and, and work within the economy so if yeah. no one's paved that perfectly yet or close to perfect as possible then every game that's going to come out is going to make mistakes at some point so that's why yeah. i think it's more important do you have a team that yes they're probably going to make a mistake along the way but do you believe that they're going to make it right after they make the mistake and learn from it and grow and continue to improve and that's where I do see that from the Splinterlands team, even if I don't agree with every single thing that they decide on. Yeah, I was going to ask you that. Yeah, that, that that's the big thing. You're right, like because mistakes are going to happen, and it's gonna it's a hard process. And uh, there's like everything when I look at Bitcoin and how and its history, I, I I see a lot of similarities with with Splinterlands because it's like it came out originally and it was kind of a li it was a novelty mm -hmm. and maybe it was even a joke like some people kind of thought it was a joke some people thought it was a scam there was real there was no real knowledge about it but then those who did know about it were really reluctant let's put it that way yeah um with a few exceptions and then but then they really enjoy the tool and the technology and they really stuck around and invested in it and at some point other people are like hey is that thing still going around and it's like Oh, now like Bitcoin's a thousand dollars, and then you know what I mean. And there's new interest because of that. Yeah. And then there's new interest at three thousand. There's new interest at twenty, and there's new interest at sixty. And and but that's an analogy too for Splinterlands, where I think we probably are in a, you know, we're benefiting from the bull run. Yeah. And it's conceivable that we will, <clears throat> we will suffer some significant losses like after the bull run. Mm -hmm. Now, does that mean that I would? sell all my cards or that I would panic or that, you know, I'm telling people that there's going to be reason to panic. No, I think there's also an argument you could raise up and say, we will be insulated because we have, you know, a, a lot of users now that are enjoying the game. And there's also new things coming down the pipe, like chaos Legion and the new, um, rank leagues and the yeah. doubling your rewards essentially. Um, and then there's land and what that'll be. And, and so there's this, there's this horse in front of us that is going to keep us going, I think. Um, but it's conceivable the prices would fall for a while. But as far as I'm concerned, I've said this on my channel a few times, like if I'm going to be here in four years and there'll be another bear, a bull market. And the, what we saw here is I, I'm convinced, and I don't say this as advice to anybody, but this is my heart and where I'm at and what I put my money where my mouth is. And, and I think in four years, we're going to be surprised by what growth we've seen in Splinterlands. Mm. That's cool. I love the thought there. And, you know, I think... We're probably getting close to the end of the end of the video so maybe this is a good place to end it here with this last question is uh, I, I like to play a little bit you know as i'm thinking about investments and stuff like that play devil's advocate and think okay i feel this way i feel like it's going to be bullish i feel like i'm going to get good long term investments but what, what would be the thing that would make it not true <laughs> you know so for you yeah. uh you know maybe try to think against your own feeling against your own mindset here what yep. would it what would be something that would potentially you know ruin splinterlands or take it down and then uh, a follow-up question i think to that is how long do you think splinterlands could potentially last because for most video games you know they don't last a, a, a ton of time and you know we don't know with nft games how that's going to change things but mm -hmm. realistically could we see splinterland still you know up and running and doing well in 5 10 15 years i don't know what, what are your thoughts there mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's fun. That's something that I'd love to just like sit down and like eat some nachos and just talk about for hours because there's so many yeah. there's so many dimensions to that. Um, the go to a pub and grab a beer, um, but and then you have to narrow down that four hour pub conversation to a yeah. five minute YouTube video. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think I've got some uh, uh, thoughts on that. I mean, first of all, I, I still played like I just told to my subscribers the other day. I just bought Diablo two for the third time. Diablo two. <laughs> And um, it's it's the best Diablo in my opinion, and I've played them all thoroughly. And it's the best Diablo in my opinion. Wow. And there's that should say something about what I think you know, the sort of longevity we could expect for something like Splinterlands. And and it's interesting to note that like a game like Diablo Two had no real, if you're being honest, like the graphics were pretty poor. And yeah. and now they've been revised and they're much nicer looking. I I, I play the new version. Um, 
but the same the same is true with Splinterlands. Like it's it's a it's basic. It's not particularly exciting when you look at it. But mm-hmm. but you need to. People say that about sports too. Like they they watch football games and they're like, it's so boring. It's because you don't really understand what's happening sometimes. But if you understand the 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 interplay of this ability with that ability and oh mm-hmm. that one miss was so pivotal because that guy didn't die and then it, it allowed the fortify to stick around which protected the you know and yeah. it, so there's so much complexity there that you could overlook if you didn't really understand the game and so as far as i'm concerned th- there's enough complexity there that um, I could see that being something that is improved upon visually with years to come and they've already talked about how they want to do like a, a <clears throat> 2.5d um graphical upgrade and then there's the whole land thing and how that's going to be a mini game and guilds is blowing up in its own mini game because guilds is a mini game um it's not the rank battle it's going to offer it, it offers gladiator cards and merits it's eventually going to offer sps so there's going to be these there's these different developments that i already see diversifying the gameplay that i love already mm. and so i would say i'm super bullish like even 10 or 20 years but to be then to rein it in and answer your other part of your question which is like like what could take it down i mean there's lots of things that i would be worried about but i mean one thing would be sps could be called a security and you know you mm-hmm. people in crypto know what's happened to xrp ever since um the the previous um commissioner of the securities and exchange came out and said that xrp was a security and um i think xrp is going to go to higher highs so i don't think it died in that process uh, maybe some of the viewers will disagree with me, but I that's my bet. And same with even if Splinterland that happened to Splinterlands, I would think it's just it's gone too far. It's now, in my opinion, the biggest, the best, the most successful. It's got too much attention. It's 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 growing too significantly. I don't know that even that would take it out. And I'm willing to say if that's like a 10 or a 20 percent chance that that could something like some black swan could take it down. Mm-hmm. I guess I'm willing to take that 10 or 20 percent. Uh, because I just love the game and I think it rewards you in a meaningful way across a long enough time horizon. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a lot of good thoughts there. I think to add to that, I think one thing that I don't think it would ruin the game. I don't think it would destroy the economy, anything like that, but maybe stunts the growth a little bit is these other developments of the blockchain games that are different genres and categories. You know, we talked about the MMOs and RPGs and stuff like that. And if those games actually start doing it well and have good games, I feel like those players who are just here for the investment side of things and they don't actually love the card battle or gameplay, then we might see some of those players move off into those different types of games. But at the same time, you would think that as those games get more players, there's probably more players in NFT gaming and overall. So probably Splinterlands continues to grow anyways. So that's something I think I'm going to keep my eye on. You know, is there is there another game but i don't think there's another card game out there that will probably catch splinterlands you know gods unchained has got problems with the forge uh maybe skyweaver but even then you know it's a turn based i feel like it's a different style of of card battler that even those Mm -hmm. games could coexist at the same time and have different audiences you know one of the things i love about splinterlands even though i like the turn based you know style of skyweaver gods unchained is that it's just such an easy game to play on mobile. I feel like I can play it for 10 minutes if I want to do a couple battles during a break versus you know some of those other games, card battlers and, and turn-based ones, they take you know sometimes 20, 30 minutes to play, right? And and so I, th- I think there are enough different genres that it probably wouldn't take down Splinterlands, but maybe it would not grow as quickly. I don't know. So those are the yeah. types of things that I'm going to be watching for as other games are developing. But one of the things I love that they say in the AMAs is, and this is very long-term Splinterlands, but it's an interesting discussion in itself is, hey, one day as a company, we might do, you know, an RPG ourselves. We might do an, another game mode ourselves. And, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know what will happen then if if our NFTs and SPS and all that will mean anything. I would, I would gl- you know, gladly accept it if, it if it did get to, you know, mean something in the game or have value. I'm sure they'll put out new NFTs and all that stuff too so they can make money. But... I think it's one of these really interesting things in crypto that a lot of these games that are starting now and earning so much money like a Splinterlands or like an Axie, they're going to be able to develop other games that keep them going. Even if the Splinterlands, you know, auto battler dies off right now, there's probably Mm -hmm. another game that they'll have enough money to develop in five years that could do just as well, if not better. So 
that's yeah. that's an interesting thing to also think through is that yeah this card game may not be the craziest card game out there yet but you know even if it dies off they might have something else down the pipeline i mean who knows it's really yeah. fun to predict and fun to think about and who knows what's mm -hmm. gonna gonna happen in the future mm -hmm. and i think they're already kind of tipping their hat towards that aren't they like they that you said they talked about maybe they'll go they'll do that or maybe they'll develop a tv series or maybe they've said that and maybe they'll yeah. um the land thing to me sounds like it's going to be a whole other game that we don't fully even really understand yet and then the brawls too i see that growing so i i already i think we're already seeing it and we're only going to need to look back in like a year or two and be like oh like it was happening all the time and now they got us to that place where we now see how so, but I, you know, I know that I sound like a fanboy. I am a fanboy, and maybe I'm being like I've well, I've drank the Kool Aid, maybe. But I'm gonna be here. I'm gonna be doing my thing. Yeah, and yeah. I agree. Maybe we sound like we we've drank the Kool Aid. That's a good way to say it. But as as I said earlier, if you're not about this Kool Aid, go find another Kool Aid that you're about. That's, right. That's great. I mean, great. I want you to find a game that you're excited about, a project you're excited totally. about. As long as it's totally. not a scam, I hope you can avoid scams because there's tons of, of them out there. But other than yeah. that, if you want to play a different game, that's fine. Uh, I like Splinterlands, yep. you know, and I think exactly. you do too. <laughs> so, well, I, I think that's probably a good place to end since uh, we're probably up around 40 minutes. But Dwayne, thank you so much. Uh, any last words? Uh, where, If people are watching this video on my channel, where can they find you and, and uh, either watch your videos or talk to you? So first of all, I guess just thanks for, I guess, reaching out to me to give this idea. Um, I really enjoy your channel. And if people are seeing this content for the first time and they stuck around, you should definitely like and subscribe to this guy here. Um, great content. I appreciate it. I appreciate people creating that, like that intelligent uh, conversation on this important kind of revolution for video games. And for me, uh, Infidel1258 on YouTube. And um, I post content all day, every day, because this game has changed my life. So yep. check out the channel. Yeah, and we'll hopefully remember to drop each other's channels in the comments, pin it, so yeah. you guys can just get the quick, easy access there. Thanks again, Dwayne, for helping me get into Splinterlands and many other players. You are awesome in helping the community grow and getting players, uh, hopefully, fun and some uh, good, good yeah. investment return as well. So thank you for your work as well. To everyone watching and that stuck around for this whole video, thank you guys so much for supporting both of our channels and much mm -hmm. love to you all. We'll see you guys next time. If you enjoyed this, let us know and we'll maybe plan another one in the future. For now, yeah. see you later.